good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's live with Leanne. I'm from Minot, North Dakota, and I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for, gosh, I think 17 years. I believe that's what it is. <laughs> I can't keep track. Uh, yeah, let me know you're here, where you're from. Um, if you're first time here, that would be awesome. I would love to know that. Um, we're going to share a few things. Last night I had Stamp With Me Live and we made twisted ribbon cards. So this is what I created last night using the Sun Prints and Pretty Prints designer paper and some of the dies from the ooh, Nature's Prints uh, bundle, I believe. So yeah, this is, so Stamp With Me Live, how that works is you have a month to share your version of my double twisted ribbon cards on my stamp and share group and then you'll be in the drawing for a free embellishment so you have through thanksgiving weekend to share your card and that's on my uh, stamp and share page and i will share a uh, link to that in this video once it's uploaded so um before we get started a mm, little bit dry a uh, little reminder, there are still a few things left on the clearance rack, so you can see how many things are already gone. Things go very fast once they release them, but there's still quite a bit left, so be sure to check that out if you're placing an order. Here's my host codes uh, for the rest of the month, and anybody who orders over 50 receives a free embellishment from me. And I also thought I'd share, make sure that you know that those who shop with me um, are uh, can use a frequent shopper tracking form. And once you fill this out, you get a $50 item or items free from me. So it, it pays to, um, to use the form and save your order numbers and save this. And um, I usually send it to new customers when they order from me. It's also on my blog, so you know. Um, but the best deal is still the starter kit. So that is, I hope that if you like deals and or being a part of something fun, bigger than yourself, I hope you consider the starter kit because it is a great deal. $155 worth of products, your choice, $99, free shipping, free business supplies, free uh, paper pumpkin kit. There's a lot free and it's such a good deal. So I hope you consider that too when you're placing your order. If it's $99, please just get the starter kit and get a discount on your future orders for a while. As long as you want. You do not have to do anything. Okay, last week's prizes were for sharing or for commenting. They were um, some cute cards. You'll get four cute cards, the winner will. And the person who shared and won the drawing receives a pack of um, a sample of designer paper and a million thanks stamp set that's new. So, drum roll, the winners are Eddie Potts won this. I'm sorry, Eddie Potts won the cards and Diane Rieger won the stamp set and the designer paper. So, thank you so much for uh, sharing, commenting, getting the word out on my videos. I really appreciate that. All right, so the prizes for this week are, for commenting, I have a pack of the Cute Stars Adhesive Back Sequins. Those were in last holiday catalog. And for sharing, I have a little mini card kit. It is four note cards and envelopes and a share of some designer paper, some elements. There are more in the pack as well that you can make your own cards with. So that is for sharing. So. Yeah, if you enjoy my videos, please help me get the word out and grow my audience. I would love that. Um, yeah, it's fun to, to grow and um, see new people that are coming in. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Um, let's see. A couple things that are not available right now when you're ordering are the Leaf Label and Amber Gems. Festive Pearls are out of stock. Uh, Distressed Gold Paper. Country wreath dies, seasonal sequins are on low inventory. They're going to go away soon, I think. Evergreen cardstock and the metallic embossing powder pack. Most of these items will be back in early November. So they, you know, they're at the mercy of the, the shipping and the container trucks and what whatever else there. Yeah, it's 
interesting these days when you go to the store and half the shelves are empty. It's crazy. Or they're out of something like for weeks. So it is an issue for um, a lot of products that come from overseas especially. Okay, today we're going to be playing with one of my favorites, Soft Seedlings. And I'm going to show you three ways to color this with and have multiple colors on one stamp. So actually, it's almost four ways when I think about it. So let's get started. We're, our, my first card is one we made at my card clubs in October. So here it is, and it uses Mary Merlot. Now, I don't know how many of you have not used Mary Merlot, but um, I hadn't for a long time. So I challenged myself to use that. And it's funny, after I made this card and we got some of my fall fall um, decorating things out, I had a, like a tablecloth that was Mary Merlot, maybe a little bit of rust and crushed curry. So I was right on track. Um, yes, the split textures uh, dies are back. They are not on the list, uh, Joan. So yeah, thanks for asking. Okay, all right, so getting the pieces out. This, this is really a, quite an easy card and my gals enjoyed it tremendously. They really um, liked playing with this technique. So the card base is uh, four and a quarter by 11 and we'll just score it at five and a half. We'll just score that on both sides so it mines and we'll move that away. Then we have two pieces, one for the inside, one for the outside of three and a half by four and three quarter. And then the crushed curry piece is just a little bit bigger at three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And that let the people who didn't want to do this kitty wampus like I did, do it uh, layered nicely and evenly like that. But uh, most people were fine with doing it this way. Okay, all right, let's get started. Um, this piece right here, I'll just talk about that a minute. This is a piece of gold foil. And it's funny what made this so much easier. Let's see if I can find that. I had a large piece like, like this big and I textured it all at once. And then I just cut it into strips. So much easier than putting these strips in alone. Texture a whole piece and then cut it apart. So that's how I did that. This is from the Flurry dies. So I'll be using this on both cards. Actually, I really like the, um, the stitched edge and the odd um, kind of shape. So, all right, we'll get started. Now, I'm gonna point out the difference in these two cards. One has one of the leaf labels from the, that, that are gone right now. Here are the gems that come with it. They'll be back mid-September. Um, the other one just does not. So this one I stamped once and added a leaf. I'm gonna make this one today and, add, and not add a leaf. But I do wanna show you something on those leaf, um, leaf labels. If you, um, let me get one out, take one and just crumple it up. <laughs> I know you're gonna think, what? And then, and you can just be kind of rough with it, and it's very stiff. And once you do this, then you can add color to it. So now it's like an old maple leaf that is on your, um, <laughs> in your yard. And then you can add some ink to it. And I'm using Crush Curry and just kind of rub it across the highlights. And the crushed curry is not going to show up as much as the next color. So I might just do the edges because the Mary Merlot is gonna take over because it's so much darker, but I want a little bit of this curry color on here. Set that aside and go to the Mary Merlot. And you can rub this across if you want to, but your results will be a little um, less uh, predictable. So it kind of hits the highs on there. Isn't that pretty? So that looks, and you could add oranges and more colors to that if you want to. So that's an interesting idea to do with those, those leaf gems. All right, so we're going to get my Mary Merlot out and ink this up. 
and you need to travel a bit because this is a large stamp. And we're going to go from the top and come from the side. All right, then we will add those little seed pods kind of like falling leaves, right? Okay, and then while I have that, I'm going to stamp the inside just once. Now you're wondering, how am I, how am I going to add the, the gold or the crushed curry to that? Super simple. Okay, we'll get the crushed curry out and a sponge dauber and just start adding. And it don't have to be all the way to the edges. You just need to add some highlights. Isn't that pretty? What a difference. Yeah, the leaf label and gems are not available. You're right, it is sad. But they'll be back in about a week and a half. They, they're predicting November 7th for those. I know they, yeah, they, they are so cool. All right, so now you're wondering, how do you do add color to those with the sponge dauber? Well, I came up with something using the blends markers. So just follow those align, along, I should say, and you can add as much or as little color as you want to these. Just be kind of predictable or not predictable, your choice. And then you can also add to the veins, a few of the veins. Isn't that fun? So once you do this and go over the, uh, the leaves, it ends up almost being like an orange because it mixes just a little bit of color. What a difference, right? So because our ink is water-based and the blends are alcohol, you can go right over these. And I'm not even being uh, perfect. You, don't have, you can do as much as you want, but it adds so much detail. So let me show you. Oh, I did forget one thing. So isn't that pretty how um, you can kind of see that the veins are highlighted with the uh, the blends. It almost turns a little bit orange once you go over the uh, Mer Mary Merlot ink with the daffodil blends. But I, I love it. I think it's really pretty. Okay, a couple more things to do here. We're going to ink the edge of this one with Mary Merlot just to add a little more color. Ooh, there's a lot of ink on that one. So depending on how you hold, I've showed this before, how you hold your sponge dauber, you can get more or less. So if you hold it on or the edge, you're going to get a lot more depth into the card if you hold it like this. If I hold it perpendicular, you're going to get a lot less. You're gonna get a fine edge of sponging. Don't, I, I don't recommend doing it on your table unless you want a lot of uh, irregular sponging. It's much cleaner to hold it up in the air. And my label, while I have my ink out, I'm gonna do this. I decided to sponge this in yellow. I didn't want it to um, be as noticeable, just a really soft color here. Okay. All right, now we will ink our greeting and love the fonts in this set. So how many of you have this already? It's, it's such a pretty set with gorgeous um, fonts and greetings. Okay, simple thinking of you. And I'm gonna close these up for now so you don't get in trouble. All right. Okay, so to put this together, I have some tips for you. All right, so you can do one of two ways. You can adhere this first, or you can adhere them together. I prefer to do it separately, 
So isn't it funny how you turn it over even though it's blank on both sides? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, what I'm doing right now is match, is looking at my edges. Each edge should be fairly similar as far as these and these. So I'm happy with that. And I wanna be sure these are falling down even though this is pointing up, most of the rest is falling down. So yeah, I can put this on, just looking at my layers. This one, I like to keep even with the edges of the card. So I'm looking from here to the outside and this edge to the outside to make sure it's straight. It's really hard to get straight and same here, trying to get those all straight. Okay, my little strip of adhesive. I'm going to use my tape runner on this. All the way across. This is half inch by four and a quarter, I believe. Okay, now to get that loopy, let me show you the card again. Oh, that's not the, quite the right one. We'll do this one. It's almost in a nice loop already, but what I like to do is put adhesive on the back and take those loops and kind of spread them out a little bit and then press them, <laughs> you end up, there you go, press them on my card, or my card stock. And, so you can have ends if you want to, I'm not going to have any ends. Then turn it over and see if you like it, I'm, I'm happy with that. And then you have to add if you want it even, you need to add dimensionals to it to kind of cover up that adhesive so it doesn't adhere flat in some areas and raised in another area. So what do you think of the card? I'm gonna move over and have it offset a little bit. There we go, not quite done. I'm gonna add some of those gems. Yeah, the leaves are really pretty. You can see that my ink, I re-inked my Mary Merlot on this one, so it's darker. That one is not um, inked heavily, so it's a little bit lighter. Let's see. Here, and we'll do a little one up here. There we go. So that's simple. Oh, didn't it hear the inside yet? And there your inside is decorated as well. Okay, so there are the cards. Mary Merlot and Crushed Curry. Very different colors, but I think they're so rich and vibrant. Great, I'm glad you're gonna make that, Barbara. Awesome. Okay, all right, moving on to the next card. This one is a technique that I know many of you may have tried. I'm not, you know, we'll see. It uses Joseph's coat, and I stuck with the same similar colors. Anyway, I added some pumpkin pie to this. So that is Joseph's coat, which involves heat embossing. All right, so let's get started. Now, I did pre-do some of it, but I'm going to show you. How to start now just want to make sure I'm using the correct piece all right move this one aside and add the direction or the measurements here for you okay so it's it involves adding color first to your neutral um, designer paper or neutral cardstock so I'm gonna start with the darkest color first this just works for me and I fill in with the lightest color Okay, let me find my sponge daubers. Hmm, I think this one will work. Oh, and one more pumpkin pie. Okay, so Mary Merlot, just double check that, and just do random splotches. You don't want to be always circular, but um, so do a little bit odd shapes so it doesn't show up as just a bunch of circles. 
when you're doing your your embossing because this will show through on your solid image okay that's enough of that Move that over oh and the one thing i didn't do is clean this because i'll be using that in just a minute got my chamois back here okay all right next to next darkest color is pumpkin pie and i usually test my dauber even though i label it every now and then um i get into uh of the wrong color so just start filling in. Now you want about a third. I didn't want as much uh, of the Merry Merlot because on this one it really stood out. And I'm like, mm, not sure I want that much. So again, try and be more random probably than I'm doing. Okay, that should be good. I think that's it for pumpkin. Now we will get into the crushed curry. So this is our background before we um, heat emboss because this is going to show through and then we coat it all in black and that reveals um, the solid. You need a fairly solid image with this technique. Um, you could fine line, it just will not show as much. Now when I say solid, that means something like that, that is um, very, um, not fine line. These are fine line images, and you do want something that's fairly solid. It takes a little bit to fill all this in. But we'll get to the next step pretty quick here. And you can go as dark or as many colors as you want to. Joseph's coat, coat of many colors, right? Okay, so now you do need to either heat set this or let it dry before you do this. I'm gonna try and cheat and use my, I'm gonna actually rub this. And hopefully that's gonna let it dry a little bit and then use my embossing buddy. Now this buddy is old and pretty thin, so I have to tap it to get a lot out. Newer buddies, you don't have to, but this is what I do when one is getting so thin and after I tap that powder up, just a powder bag, just a bag of powder, you can see it was a little bit wet yet. It's turning a little bit orange. Okay, then I rub that powder around a little bit because um, if I wasn't, if I could let this dry, I wouldn't have to do this quite as much. But I don't want my, um, my clear powder to stick. Okay, so now we need Versamark. Versamark ink and clear embossing powder. Okay. I'm not going to heat set this because I have one done. I just don't like the noise on the video, but um, you get the idea here. Okay, so we get our cleaned. I'm going to just double check that that's clean so I don't ruin my Versamark ink pad with Mary Merlot. All right. So we're going to ink this up with Versamark. How many of you do heat embossing or you've never done heat embossing? Let me know. It's quite, um, it's just really fun. It's kind of one of those wows. And you have to be pretty quick or you do this in between colors. So when it's very difficult to see, you have to use the reflection of the Versamark. So I'm working pretty quickly here. I'm gonna get to the inside. And trying to look at that reflection. I'm going to go here and get one of those little seed pods in. And then right away, trying to get my fingers out of the area, we're going to, and this is just many uh, <laughs> uh, bottles or jars of heat embossing. that I keep in a Chinese food container. <laughs> okay, now I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna try and hold this up so you can see where the powder is. It's very hard to see on this, but maybe that helps. Now I would normally get my heat gun and heat set this right away. I don't need to, because I did one in advance. And I'll just set this in a safe place so I can do it 
um, when the video is done. But I do have one done ahead of time. So now let's see if you can see the shine where it's heat embossed. Okay. All right. So this is where the fun comes in. Okay, I'm going to use a scrap piece of paper. Oh, I know I forgot one thing. Hold on. I need a tissue. You could use a paper towel. I happen to have tissues fairly handy, so that's why I'm using those. All right, so grab your memento ink, and it has to be memento or a water-based ink. It cannot, a dye ink, it cannot be stays on. Stays on will cover everything and completely cover your heat embossing. So you take that ink pad and you just roll right over it. So it's important for it not to be a sponged ink it this is a like a linen pad so it, it is much easier than um, on your ink pad it does not hurt your ink pad when it has that that um i can see i have a little divot there we'll see if we can fix that so this is another reason for the tissue so i don't get my fingers all all wet i need to hold it in another area Let's see if i can get in there i noticed that earlier and i didn't uh, fix it. So now rub, I'm trying to hold with one hand so I don't get black fingers. And then you rub that clean off. And it reveals your colored leaves. See that tissue is full. It's coming off of the embossed areas and not, I'm going to grab a piece so I can hold that and not on the cardstock. It stays black on the cardstock. So I'm gonna show you a hint. I don't like those little dots right there. So I'll show you a tip on how to fix that with, blo with black um, Joseph's Coat technique. Okay, I'm hoping I didn't get my fingers too black. So you just need a black marker. And I happen to have a blends. It has to be a permanent marker. Blends are, um, Wonderful, because they will cover up. Oh, I have a feeling that end is getting dry. Yeah, here we go. So look at how that covered that up. And there's a little bit of embossing there and a little bit there where I didn't maybe um, get all my powder off. So gone, right? So cool. All right, that is Joseph's coat. Now I could have left this as is, but I decided that I wanted to cut it into panels. So I cut this into three pieces at one and a half. So let's do that. Put this here and start from one to two. There's the half inch mark. Hopefully I cut my pieces correctly. Let's find out. And there is one and a half. And it looks like I'm gonna be good. So here is our little puzzle. That we're going to adhere just directly onto. Huh, I got that wrong. There we go. <laughs> directly onto our Crush Curry card. So hang on, I'm going to show you another way to add color to this stamp in just a minute once I get um, the front adhered. Now, how do you line this up? Yes, you could definitely use Knight of Navy. I actually thought I could even use Mary Merlot if I didn't um, have Mary Merlot in there. If I had another type of maybe a rust or something, I could go Mary Merlot. Although if you're using the newer versions of the foam pads, it's a little harder to rub. You may have to tap because it can tear your edges with the foam pads. So if you have the newer ink pads, I don't recommend rubbing. It's just, it's hard. I have torn some edges of my ink pads by doing some techniques. So I'm gonna line these up, what I think is even. And you could even go a little bit less. In fact, I'm gonna try that. And that's what I did on that card, I guess, now that I look at that. Closer um, in the center than the edges. That looks fairly good. So I'm gonna actually do the middle first.
is the edges I'm pretty happy with. So just make sure top to bottom. So you could measure, you know, I prefer just um, winging it. Got my little tails and then it doesn't want to come again with the seal. If you're having trouble with the seal, there is a way to do that and that is is to go up like that and then you won't have those uh, tails of adhesive that and then that tends to make the adhesive go back in on itself so there's a technique to using those okay so we're simply going to ink that reading in black same one, I really like thinking of you because the inside then can be anything. It could be a thank you, a birthday. Um, it just, and it's nice and long and fills this um, die cut in very nicely. So I did use a new die that I really like and that is from, let me show you. That is from something new that's coming out, the Framed Florets, coming out in November for customers. There is a die, actually I don't have it in here, but this is a double set of die. There's more on the neck, on the inside. I'll be showing um, some cards with this in a little bit um, today that I did. So this one was from the gold and rose gold uh, designer paper in the annual catalog. And this is from Gold Foil. So two different things, two different papers, just because I happen to have it on my desk. So that's what I used. I don't want much, just a little smear, because if you have a smear, it doesn't tend to um, leak out. If you have large dots, it may. So I'm just gonna go off the paper just a little bit. And then add some dimensionals to this. How many of you have to pop something up? I'm one of those who, if everything is flat, it's not as interesting to me. Throw that straight. And then a small little twine bow from black. And this is from our five pack of twine that is in the annual catalog. So just a simple little bunny ear. And like I said last night, don't do, um, if you're practicing bows, don't practice on twine. It's not that friendly <laughs> to learn on. Ribbon is much better. Okay, we'll finish with some gems. And remember ribbon and mini glue dots are best friends. So that's how I always add my ribbons. Okay, and last is the gems. And I'm out of the small ones, so we'll just be using the large ones. Oh, no, I do have a few. Random, random, how to do random. <laughs> Anybody else have trouble with random? We'll just do that. Okay, there is our, oh, I wanted to show you the inside. Okay, so I have an idea. I didn't do an inside on this one, but I thought about it, and I thought, well, I'm going to do an inside today. So we're going to ink in crushed curry first, and then we're going to dab on other colors. All right, so here's pumpkin. Let's start with the next lightest color. And trying to remember, because it doesn't show up that well, where I put this. <laughs> and, and you know, it just the way, it's just the way it is. If you <laughs> don't overstress or overthink about it. So sometimes I go over them a little bit. All right, that is the pumpkin. Now we're going to add some Mary Merlot. You know, this is a much darker, so you can see where you're adding your ink a lot easier. I'm gonna do the base of the um, seed pods and maybe a few edges here and there. I don't wanna 
over overdo it. Okay, so then you want to huff, and my card is facing sideways. So because you inked and it's been about a minute, you're going to want to huff to re-moisten the ink. <sighs> and you love my inky fingers. Okay, third way. It looks like baby wipe, right? A third way. Now you would want to uh, clean this uh, before you would do the second card, before inking in the crushed curry. But yeah, it looks just like baby wipe. It's so pretty. So that, now our card can be um, for anything, since it says thinking of you on the front. So there's four ways to color um, a solid stamp. And the first one was sponge dauber. Second one was um, blends markers, add a little bit of blends to them. Third was Joseph's coat. And fourth was to dab on color before you stamp. This is after you stamp, before you stamp. So, hey Marilyn, glad you, glad you could join us. My friend Marilyn lives just eight blocks from, well, maybe a little bit more, 10 blocks from me, and she's not been feeling well, so glad you popped in. All right, so those are the cards today. Now, last week I told you I would share <laughs> the team swaps, and I didn't get to it. I totally signed off and did not uh, share. So, but while we've got you, I'm gonna just show these cards. So if anybody wants to do a screenshot or maybe even myself, those are the cards today. So yeah, beautiful set of, um, of stamps. If you don't have it yet, I'm assuming you may want it now. <laughs> it didn't take me long to, um, to love this stamp set. It's so pretty. Okay, all right. So let's get to our team swap. So I just wanna close up some ink pads so I don't get myself in trouble. Well, I'm showing you them. All right. Okay, first of all, we did a sampler and we used the Rustic Harvest designer paper as our color scheme. So quite um, kind of dark, so that's why I added the yellow strips. It's hard to get it all in the camera. Well, maybe I can get it all in the camera. Um, yeah, I added just some two inch strips and you know, honestly, I had very little of this pattern left. So there's a tiny little piece between here and that piece ends right there. They are not full length strips because I didn't have enough. It was so funny, but yeah, my team did an awesome job. So what we did was we chose colors that are in the designer paper. So it was Mary Merlot, a Cajun Craze, Crushed Curry, Mossy Meadow, Black, White. Um, those are the colors we chose. And they just, the largest square is three inches. And then I just asked for three layers that they had to have three layers on their card or more and possibly an embellishment. So it worked out really nicely and beautiful. So this will be um, great to put into um, a framed, uh, a frame. And I usually use a shadow box frame. It's 12 inches uh, uh, large and everybody is just asked to use mossy meadow as their largest layer and then they can just use any color in the designer paper but it doesn't have to have the designer paper in it as you can see so yeah beautiful and i'll be sharing this on my blog with more details of the um, products that they used okay let's get to the cards all right, first up, these are all Christmas cards. This is Marilyn's card using the Leaves of Holly and the Bows of, Ho Bows of Holly designer paper. She textured with the gingham folder. And there's her inside. She stamped some leaves. It's always great to decorate your inside. This one, look at this. It's a pillar card. This one was done by Paula, and it fits in a standard um, A2 size envelope. So it has a tag that pops up. She used the mini pocket dies and textured them with the wintry embossing folder, added one of those flat jingle bells, used the same Bows of Holly designer paper that Marilyn did. Isn't that just stunning? A vertical um, pillar card. So cool. Okay, next is a book binding card fold by Mary. She used the Country Wreaths Bundle. 
and the Gingham Cottage Designer Paper. Candy did an easy fun fold with the same Gingham Cottage bundle in crumb cake, olive, cherry cobbler, and um, use some festive pearls. Just cut off an inch of your card front and add a designer paper si uh, strip, and you've got a neat fun fold. Marla made this one with the Peaceful Deer uh, bundle, or actually it's not a bundle, it's in the annual catalog now, it's separate, but there's a punch, there are dies. I love that she used the, uh, what are they called, the basic elements, basic effects, it's the squeeze bottles of colored like glue almost it's for her ornaments. I can't remember the name of them. But she stamped this background multiple times. You can see there's one, there's one, there's one. So it created a background and then this solid large one in the foreground gives so much depth to the card. So Brenda made this one. Isn't that beautiful? So she used the um, <laughs> Storybook Gnomes designer paper, some vellum that she textured, the wonderful snowflakes that are you can buy as is. Oh boy, I've got, I better be careful. I've got some color on me. Boy, that's, that's on there. Anyway, better watch these white cards. So this is the spruced up bundle for the, the trees. And Tracy made this one. She used, oh, shimmer, metallic and shimmer designer paper. It comes in black, pumpkin and evergreen, I believe. The wintry die, she textured that uh, die cut and added die cuts. The snowflakes are from the ch chic dies. She, she embossed directly on the silver. Isn't that beautiful? And I don't know, I think she used clear. I don't know if she, you wouldn't even have to use silver. So that's a beautiful card. Okay, next, yeah, I'm glad you're liking the cards. This is a card by Barbara. I think you're watching Barbara, aren't you? So she used the Merriest Moments stamp set and Merriest, oh gosh, there's two there's dies that the, all the, the large die here, there's two. One will die cut the, the, the intricate leaves and frame and the other one does the outside. So that's in the holiday catalog. And she also used the Christmas banner stamp set and dies for some of these extras. So really cool. And the same die cut was used by Kim in white and starry sky. And it does this stitched frame too to match. And she used a little bit of that, that mesh ribbon um, to pull in the silver. Aren't they awesome? Yeah, they did such a good job. Sharon did this one using the Sweetest Christmas, is it Sweetest Christmas Bundle? I think so. Um, and the red glimmer, there's a little white glimmer in the six by six pack. Garden green, um, real red, white, very simple card, but those die cuts just make the scene really pretty. And let's see, Roxanne did this one using the Christmas Barn set and she used the um, best, very best trio punch for her border, her little corner edges, so cool. There's her inside. I'll be sharing all these cards on my blog this week. So this barn is a die cut, the horse and sleigh is a die cut, the rest is all stamped. So yeah, she could stamp all the trees and add the die cut and the wreath over it so she didn't have to mask. That was smart. Running out of room. This one is one I made with the new, um, I had it right here, the new stamp set that's coming out in November for everybody called Framed and, Fre Framed and Festive. So yeah, it is. Uh, my team does fabulous work. Yes, they do. Um, so this is Mary Merlot with gold. That's that gold distressed paper that is out of stock right now. This ribbon, oh, I think, is that out of stock or low inventory? It was gone. Maybe that's, I didn't, maybe I missed that. And this designer paper is from the uh, Lights Aglow, that gold uh, and vanilla paper. So that's that one. 
And Annette made this one. I love this card. It's so cool. Doesn't that look like water or ice or something? It's simply, this is Starry Sky, and I believe this is Orchid Opulence. Or is it a piece of designer paper? Maybe it's the designer paper from the Sun Prince. I bet that's what it is. But this is the diorama dies. And so she has the smallest one that the little penguin is on. And then the, the largest one is her little um, frame. So super cool. I love this card. It really evokes a scene, a winter scene. And this one was done by Candace, And she used the North Pole Mischief and colored it in with blends, markers. And this frame is from the Fabulous Frames. So it would cut out, if you did this in white and red, you would get the red frame, the red inside, and then she had to do it again in white, and now she has a white frame she can use on another card. So isn't that just sweet? Yeah, love that. And lastly, a card by Karen. Um, oh, I forgot. Decorated with pines, decorate, it's something decorated. I don't have this bundle, but it's gorgeous. She used the same designer paper that I did that lights a glow and the gold shimmer, cherry cobbler, timber embossing folder, and gold um, twine bow. So yeah, gorgeous cards. They are absolutely stunning. Um, love seeing what my team does and I love to share it with you too. So thank you for the compliments. I know they'll be very happy to hear that you like them. Okay, I think that's it for today. I will be back next Tuesday, 11 a.m. Central Time. And don't forget, if you're watching me on Facebook, to follow my page. If you are watching later on YouTube, be sure to um, follow me. Click the, the bell so you get notified when I'm live, when, I'm, when I post, and you won't miss a thing. All right, thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate you watching and um, commenting. And please share my video to get the word out if you enjoy my videos. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.